For Complex News, I'm Peter Simpson, joined here by award-winning DJ, producer, overall, curator, OG Chase B. Chase, you see I had to put the OG in there. I figured oh, that man, was I appreciate cool. that. Hey. Yeah, it's weird to see who puts it in and pause and who doesn't. No, for it's sure, I get it. So I appreciate it, bro. And no doubt, especially hearing how you broke it down, it just made all the sense in the world. So I wanted to be sure I, I showed you respect on that one because yeah, I, I get the process on that. First and foremost, how you feeling? How you holding up? We've been in the house for about like five months now. Yeah. How yeah, you feeling, man? Yeah. Uh, I feel good, you know. Um, my family's all fine. Um, yeah. I check in on them every every now and then. My mom be wanting me to go to the house, and I'm just like, man, I don't even know if I should be just pulling up like that, you know? But um, I'm blessed to have, to have seen them uh, often enough. No, man, I, I completely understand how that is. I'd be kind of like reluctant to go back home. I'd be like, should I go to yeah. Dallas? Should I go see? But you know how everything is right now. But also, kudos to you and Travis for being big on being proponents of wearing your mask and social distancing and being just like a, a overall presence in helping us fight this uh, pandemic. What, what sparked that? just that uh, I did to speak out and, and use your platform. Just seeing it firsthand, you know, I feel like uh, people just didn't take it seriously, including myself, to be honest. You know, I feel like it was it was very, it was kind of lighthearted. And um, just seeing and hearing more and more people get it that I actually knew right. and all that, it was just like, man, something gotta be done about this. And the least I could do is say something and, and, and set an example and wear a mask. You got new music out, Cafeteria dropped today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, you and Don Tolliver and Nobu acting up. Walk me through the process yeah. of the video shoot. We started the whole process of this whole escapism thing um, pretty early on with with the COVID era or whatever. So it was like late March, early April. And um, so when it came to Cafeteria, we knew we wanted that to be the single. And But this is at a time, you know, we couldn't just fly in directors and whatever because, you know, people didn't want to travel like that at all. So uh, we honestly started shooting in the studio one scene just kind of led to another, you know, like that's why we got GoPros on top of Jeeps and yeah. you know, we in parking lots, all type of shit. And then um, we just kind of reached out to uh, the general manager of the Houston location. And the, the fire part is that not a lot of people know that there's a Noble in Houston at all. And they were more than happy to have us, you know what I'm saying? We went in there, invited a couple of homies over there, started shooting, fucking around in the kitchen, all type yeah. of shit. That was like the video, like it was like done. And then um, we reached out to Gunna. Gunna did his verse. We was like, oh, we got game in the video. So we uh, flew out to LA. Yeah, so the whole thing, we just kind of thugged it, to be honest. It was very DIY. And um, after we did the first shit ourselves, we were like, we got to, you know, might as well keep going now. Escapism is being built as like a collaborative album between you and Travis. Would you agree that's kind of what it is? Because it seems like you kind of front face in two though, where it might just be a Chase B album. So I called Don uh, in, in April. One of the songs that we've been like playing on like Instagram lives and like shit like that, I wanted to drop it. And then right. Don just came with a whole different energy, just like, nah, bro, we got, you know, we got so much shit, you know, we should hit him like this, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, man, like, you, you, you definitely right about that. Cafeteria is just one of them. It probably will still go on my first solo project too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it might feel like that right now, but escapism is definitely, you know, me and Don. Like you mentioned with escapism, as I did my research, it seems like people like to just say like, oh, it's Chase B and Travis Scott. But like you mentioned, it seems like it's more so you and Don. Does that get frustrating at all? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I feel it's, a, it's a really new concept. And I know the, the radio show um, definitely made it seem like that. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's just one of the things that you've got to just explain and, you know, clarify. And uh, definitely a lot of cool features on there. We're going to get, get to those uh, in the next couple of weeks for sure. Oh, so you got it tough. It's tough. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, everything, I feel like the album, if I'm not mistaken, is, is done. So it's not, you know, this isn't like one of those things where it's like, all right, and it drops in like November or some shit like that, you know. I'm with it. Um, it seems like the ideation with this album started, like you mentioned, during the pandemic when we were kind of all having a socially distance. But you as a DJ, you mentioned that um, being around people helps you understand what music works, what music does, yeah. and it's kind of feeding off your energy. So with this being a situation where you can't do that, Mm -hmm. have you have you adjusted creatively yeah i feel like that's kind of the cool part about this whole thing is that this is as organic as it could get you know it's not like we was in clubs and like oh we gotta make one of these or we was you know at some party and it was like nah we gotta you know it's like literally it's just us making shit and liking it and expanding on it me and don listen to a lot of the same type of shit when it comes to even like the bobby womax to the you know nerds to the you know gun is and all that type of shit. So uh, yeah. but this is kind of us just kind of like meeting in the middle. Don's obviously talented. Uh, his, his name continues to ring off. Was there something in his recording process that caught your attention, just the way that he moves or the way that he performs? 
Yeah, it's just obviously he's, he's quick as fuck when it comes to right. uh, writing verses and hooks. He's just like a wizard when it comes to that type of shit. Yeah. And uh, obviously his voice is is super powerful and distinct. Very. And um, he and the thing is when he when he makes these verses, it's never the same lingo. It's never like you know what I'm saying it's not like he's just saying the same shit over and over again. It's always like a different story with him. And with my production style, it was just so many different even like different genres of music that, like I said, like we kind of just met in the middle on. So um, it, I feel like me and him, we kind of just had the same mindset when it came to like how fast we wanted to work. We just kind of didn't take no for an answer and just really put our heads down and just and just got to it when it came to uh, recording, you know? That's why we have so many songs together because it was just like, yo, like, you're not sleeping, I'm not sleeping, like, let's get to it, you know, so. Your story alone is just so interesting to me, the fact that you went to Howard, you had aspirations to be like a big time radio DJ and all of a sudden that morphs into like this, one of the biggest hip hop DJs and like curator of music and producer and all these different hats. Did you ever yeah. expect your success to end up like this? Not at all, to be completely honest with you, man. I wasn't DJing in Houston at all, uh, back in like high school, all that type of shit. Start DJing, so all right, next up is the radio. And then it was like, oh, like, well, you can be, you know, uh, DJing world ride and, and clubs and shit like that. I'm like, for real, like people do that? You know, like I didn't really, I wasn't too hip to like the whole world renowned DJ thing. And then um, that's, you know, when I was in college, I started doing this research on AM and, you know, uh, DJs like that. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's my new goal was to like be like the biggest club DJ ever. And then it just kind of expanded into like, well, you out here playing all these other people's music. It's like, give a shot at making your own. So I probably, I probably started producing probably like five, six years ago. The beats I was making then wouldn't be what I wanted. You know, I just know that you get better at things just naturally. So I just kind of get that tucked and just, you know, uh, kept trying to perfect it. And now we're here, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it definitely was a very slow process for me. And um, I was just really patient and I knew I would have to be. And there's no wrong with it, you know what I'm saying? I feel like everything's happening exactly when and how it's supposed to. So I'm really happy with that. Was it kind of like odd in a way that you didn't necessarily think you end up on this path, but you and Travis have been friends since childhood and the fact that y'all are working together now, was there ever a point where you're like, damn, look at all this coming together? Yeah, uh, kinda. I always knew that uh, we collectively would be where we were supposed to, um, right. but it was never really my plans to do this. Yeah, I don't I don't think, uh, just doing my research, it was kind of obvious that you two have been just grinding cons mm -hmm. consistently. And I think oftentimes Travis has this youthful exuberance that many people might think that he's like a newer artist. But if you look back, you know, he's been producing well before, you know, whether it's like 2013, producing on Magna Carta, yeah. Holy Grail. You have yeah. roots with, with Ill Roots, you know, a radio show back in 2014 yeah. that was really pushing the culture. Do you feel like you two get the respect you deserve? You might get the accolades, but do you feel like you get the respect you deserve? Um, yeah, it, it, it just it's just shown in different ways. I mean, and we're not gonna shout about anything, you know. Like we're kind of we, we keep everything pretty humble when it comes to um, what we've accomplished. Yeah. Trophies are one thing when it comes to like you know obviously the Grammys thing was was super tough, right. but uh, you know you lose a Grammy and then go back on your sold out arena tour. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it, it comes in different different ways. Uh, we're definitely both God-fearing individuals and I feel like, you know, he has a plan for us and we're just yes. uh, following through with it, so. Absolutely, well spoken right there. Um, you, you alluded to having a solo project down the line. DJing in this era is, a, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different hats. It's a lot of ways to be successful and it feels like DJs have to diversify themselves in many ways. So for you personally, what do you define as success in this industry? Do you feel like you've already accomplished it? Like, what do you feel like it is for you? Uh, success to me, honestly, is just is, is pushing the culture forward. You know what I'm saying? I feel like uh, it's all about legacy yeah. and what you leave behind. Not only for yourself, but you know, even like family. Like my whole thing is that you should be able to provide what your parents weren't able to provide for you. You know what I'm saying? I feel like every generation should be, you know, um, improving on the next. You talked about getting your trophies, and, and obviously the success has come. You know, Travis's way, your way, Cactus Jack's way. Um, but with that success, there's people that may emulate you guys' sound. Uh, collectively, do y'all talk about that? Does that bother y'all at all? Like, how do y'all take it? Not really. Uh, I feel like that's part of the game. I feel like if people weren't copying it, then we were doing something wrong. I mean, it was whack, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. then it's on us to just innovate again. Chase, are you ready for some NBA bubble rapid fire questions? Oh man, I'm sure am. You're a hooper, you like the NBA, so do I, but I had to put you on the spot with these questions. The first one might be the toughest one, okay? Cut 
bench a start? Kevin Durant, LeBron James, James Harden. Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> that's fucked up. I'm starting James off the rip. You know what I'm saying? Okay, hometown love. That's just that. No disrespect to Brown, bro. I got to have KD on my team. I just have to. You can't dare to turn down that seven-foot sniper. It's KD. We're not playing with that. If you had to rank the top five players in the NBA bubble right now, how would you rank them? I'd say, in no order. Okay. Top of my head, i say Braun, James. Mm -hmm. Not LeBron James, but Braun and James. <laughs> um, i say Damian Lillard, Giannis, and uh, man, I'm going to say Jason Tatum. Jason, listen, Jason Tatum's bag is different. I feel like he, some niggas really hope. And yeah. Jason, man, I just feel like he just got endless moves for niggas. And, listen. Yeah, he, I just top my head for sure, Jason Taylor. Like, he's one nigga I would not want to see in that bubble. How about that? Most underrated player in the NBA today. Doesn't have to be in the bubble, but just most underrated player in the league today. Underrated? Man, I don't know if he's underrated, but I feel like Kemba doesn't get all of his, all of his flowers. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, everybody knows he's, you know, New York City point guard, handle, jump shot, and all of that shit. But I don't feel like people really give him all of the respect. Chase, I'm loving these answers so far. You really, really watch the games. Uh, you, oh, probably, yeah. you probably got league fast or something. I already oh, know. Yeah, man. <laughs> we watching all that. Oh, man, that's when I knew I had a problem. I was watching the scrimmage yesterday right. with my Mavs and Lakers and couldn't hear no sound, but was right. all the way there. But seeing Brian with gray hair was, that was fucking crazy. That makes you realize, like, yeah, we really in some pandemic shit. Real shit, though. He couldn't get the Beijing to clear that up. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <Yeah, yeah. laughs> it was wild times. Uh, favorite all-time player? I don't know, Iverson. Yeah. Okay. Is there a reason why? Uh, so, you know, I was born here in Houston. Yeah. And um, I moved to Philly when I was, like, maybe four years old. I didn't obviously didn't uh, uh, fully understand it then, but it was just yeah. like, obviously, I got number three is, is the one. Yeah. And then just seeing what he turned into and just the effect he had on the whole culture of basketball, I just, you know, yeah, he's, he's definitely my favorite. You and Travis are courtside often at the Toyota Center. Y'all see the games. Now you're laid back with your approach. Travis is, <laughs> I feel like Travis is talking shit. Yeah. Is, has there ever been a story where you two are sitting courtside and maybe Travis's trash talk has gotten under the skin of other players who didn't talk trash to you? I feel like MB might have had a little, I feel like he was a little tight. Really? Directly, yeah, yeah, yeah. We was talking a lot of shit. We was right by the bench too, it was over with. We was talking so much shit, bro. <laughs> that one was crazy, and not a player, but I remember uh, sitting with, um, with E-40 was a lot of fun too. That was just oh, during those playoff series. Yeah, yeah, that shit was fun. Okay, now break it down to because E forty is one of the top Golden State Warriors fans. Yeah, I would say like during that stretch that the Rockets and Warriors series was so contentious. So like, yeah. is he talking trash to you? Is he like talking wild shit? Or how's E forty play? He's talking shit, bro. He's really? talking endless shit. It's fun. It's all love, but that nigga talks. You know, <laughs> that's what we need, though. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you travel, what we need. Yeah, yeah. No, we need a collection of just all rappers who are NBA fans just to yeah. sit down and watch a game together. That might be a must see. Well, let the Rockets and Hawks go to no finals and shit like that. Because Quay, I'm, I'm telling you, bro. I'm, you know what? Let's hope that doesn't happen because that might end in fist fights. <laughs> yeah, Those two cities together, that's going to end. <laughs> yeah. in fist that's going to get violent. I immediately thought of Gucci Man. I was like, yeah, yeah we can right, right. out on that one. Yeah. Uh, final question for you, Chase. I need your NBA champion. Who you? Who you rocking with this year as far as champion in the bubble? Man, I'm just completely unbiased, man. I feel like the Rockets have a really good shot. Just because of, um, not for real. Just because, like, our style of play, I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna adapt well to this, like, this arena situation we got going on. It's gonna be a lot of run and gun, a lot of points getting scored. I feel like, you know, if we make our shots, we're gonna run it up. No, the reason I laughed was because you set it up. He was like being completely unbiased. So I'm thinking he really? could play Bucks or Lakers. He's like, nah, hometown. I'm doubling down. Okay. I'm with it. I feel like, you know, if Chris Paul don't get hurt, we won that, that ring a couple years ago. Like, we've been right there for, you know, it's not like we're just like kind of on the rise. We're going to have to unpack that a little bit. You said if he didn't get hurt, y'all win the ring. Not necessarily win that series, y'all win the, the ring. Oh, shit. Definitely. That whole everybody know that you know that everybody know that. I, everybody I, know that everybody know that that's what we're gonna go with all right this was a lot of fun chase appreciate you bro and uh cafeteria's out now um escapism on the way white tea on the way too don't get it fucked up you know what i'm saying we it's gonna be a good summer bro we got a lot of music in the top listen i love what you guys are doing chase stay safe man hope the family stay safe i appreciate you stopping by chopping up a complex man